it's so painful to to like be in any identified state. It's it has become like uh, really like uh, very heavy, which is good also. But like sometimes there's just like when there's no seeing, it's just. When there's not, there's not a time when there's no seeing. When there's no seeing, there's no seeing. There's a seeing, there's no seeing. What do we, how it can be no seeing? The very fact that there's no seeing means you're seeing that there's something that maybe the mind say, yeah, no, I cannot really see anymore. Which you know, when you hear these things, it's gonna be funny for you to hear those things. What it means, there's no seeing. It's seeing an activity. The seeing would be that you know you see that. Uh, your um, that, that 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 without you the consciousness nothing exists at all. You must know that by now. If you are not alive, if you are not conscious, what where is the world for you? It doesn't exist at all. You must begin in consciousness. Everything ends and begin in consciousness. It cannot be otherwise than that. The very start of seeing means that consciousness is there first. Otherwise, there cannot be any perception. Nothing at all to see. You know. This you have to be very clear about. If you're not clear about, it, you have to sit a bit more and stay with it and just you just confirm. It's not like say you know there are people. I'm I'm aware that there are people who have hundreds of things they have to think about. I'm one of them actually. Hundreds of things have to think about. You know. For you to win your eternal existence, you only have one thing to think about. Yes. <laughs> what is that? One thing you have to remember, just to remember. But of everything you see, look here. Everything you see, you know, is impermanent. The very seeing is impermanent, and something sees that also. What's behind the seeing itself, you know? It is just. It is just. Consciousness does not have to move to be behind anything. It is here. It is, it is, yeah. You have to sit with that. Sit with that. Sit with that. Miss your sandwich. Mix your cup of tea and sit with that until it has nowhere else to go. Actually, yes. but that it's just it's same for everybody. It's the same for everybody. It's just the rest is just habit. The play of habit that we're used to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not feeling like so much like this. And you know, sometimes my mind, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna give that up. You know, this is your last stop. Yes, I also like the last um, weeks. I've never spent so much time contemplating at all. Like I, I said, like time. nine hours in the mandir or something without mm. like doing anything. But what I like really, like sometimes it is like this that the attention is so much into this like objects appearing like into this identity yeah. that there is like everything that is like is like a trying. It's like it's like a car that is stuck and wants to get out, and it's not seeing that there doesn't have to be anything that has. To, it's just to, like the seeing is enough. But in, the, in this moment, it's like as if there is no value giving like that. It, it's seen. It's just like the attention is so much with this, and it so, there is somebody. But even if attention is with anything at all, there's an awareness of this. Yes. But you have to be yes. in the place of the awareness. We want a result in the in the in the in the activity, which is understandable. But you know, you have been given such an excellent way out of everything that you have to be here first. Because before anything else can be, you as consciousness has to be here first. It's not a decision you make. It's just a way a fact is. A fact doesn't depend on how you feel. If something is a fact, it's a fact. When you feel like rubbish, when you feel great, it's still just a fact, you know. And that fact is that there cannot be anything at all. Even the mind telling you you're not good. Who is he talking to? Another construct again of yourself. But I know in the moment, you know, you got the alcohol of the mind in you. It's like this, isn't it? If you got alcohol of the mind in you, and then you're gonna try and talk without slurring, you understand? Yes. 
You've been drinking out here. No, no. You eat 50 mints. So let me smell your breath. You've been drinking out here. No. So why are your lips going like that then? So it doesn't matter how much you know, the mind is going to behave like that. You're going to feel like, you know, in my body it feels really heavy, and my thoughts are going around and stuff. Suppose that's the case, that, <laughs> you know, your mind is just going full. <sighs> Suppose it was a, a, the mind is. Just, some of you know it anyway, you know? I don't have to imagine also. I, it's like this, like the last days. You know something, when your mind is like that, you should take it as a great thing. It means that the mind is is in panic. Because you're onto something. It means that, you know, because suppose it was nothing, suppose you are not, the mind would have nothing to say at all about it. But this is a sign that you're on your you're in the right place because your mind is trying to attack you. Anyway, who is it attacking, no? Is it is it is it the, the, the awareness itself? No. It's somebody mm. that, that kind of a German, isn't it? He's attacking the German, isn't it? <laughs> He's attacking something that's got a background and it's got uh, identity and a relationship and a certain kind of habit and that's what we are. The only way we can feel attacked is when our person, our personal identity, is under attack. That's what attack is. Everybody. And the fact is that we we are we are not yet out of personal identity. It still comes, no? Which means everybody had personal identity. Jesus Christ had a personal identity. Siddhartha Buddha had a personal identity. But he had to look beyond that, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Something is telling me that I'm not the prince anymore. Something is telling me I'm not, you know, that God is not happy with me anymore. Oh uh, boy, that's whoa, that's very strong. Ooh, that tough one. Yeah? I remember, but I'm just consciousness. I mean, you know, whose son am I? Whose father am I? Like this. So all these things come for you to exercise your Inquiry also. Is it true or not? Yes. You have to exercise your inquiry. Look and look at what. But the thing is that because for hundreds and hundreds of time in the past, <coughs> when these voices would come, they would create a lot of trouble. But now, you must see how much you have moved on from that. If the voice is coming and he's still going, every time he comes and goes, you know, you're not going to make it. You go, oh no. And again, after two hundred times, you're never gonna make it, you know? It's not your time, it's not your you know? And you go, oh. after a certain point you go, what why is all that? You know, I'm going to make what? It's also like what I've seen lately. Like in the beginning, like after the retreats, like there was this strong feeling, I don't want to be this person anymore. And it was also helpful to to see and like to ask myself. But actually, like now it has become a bit like who's saying that actually? And it's like like who doesn't want to be a person anymore? It's like kind of the mind is using this this now to put somebody in a position that feels bad about being a person in mm. a way. It's very good. Uh, so, where's your position in seeing that? Are you in that, or are you beyond that? It feels sometimes like I'm in that, and that's where it's like the most. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it is like this. Identity is the first stain that came in consciousness, and it is the last one to go. Personal identity is the first stain that came in consciousness, and it is the last one to go. And you know, so I don't want to say, ah, it's rubbish. No, no, because uh, you can be for forty years doing studying spirituality, but still your mind comes and goes, nah, you're never gonna get it. And oh, something, something goes crap, 
and how to get out of that. If mind comes and says, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your time, you're not going to get it, you know, it's better you go and do some more mantras or something, or something. I mean, who is it speaking to also? It's speaking to the latest version of yourself. If you feel that, you know, well, right now, you know, this is how I'm feeling, then the mind is going to be right there to tell you about that feeling. Yeah. Of course, you know. I mean, if it was good, why wouldn't you have? You'd have done it before, wouldn't you? It's not your thing, you know. Just give it up, or whatever it tells. It telling that mode of consciousness is talking to that shape of consciousness, something that that shape suffers from. But are you the shape? You know, sometimes I speak with everybody, and I say some simple pointers. I say, don't take shape. What it mean then? Is it a practical advice? Don't take shape. Because if you take a shape, the mind can speak with you through that shape. Is it possible to not have a shape? You know who you are when you don't take shape? Do you know who you are when you don't take shape? Your pure awareness. Absolutely. When you take shape, you come into time, you come into history, you come into personhood, you come into suffering like that. It's quite simple, quite simple, and it works every time. You go into shape, your mind will go, you got the wrong shape. It's like that. When are we going to learn this? I'm sure some of you guys are intelligent enough to build some machine to go to the next planet and stuff like that. But this simple advice you cannot follow. Why? Why this simple advice to say, but yeah, how did mine get me? Because I went into the shape of this person I was when I was at school, and he's beating me in that shape. If I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Every time you, if I see one of you down the road and you're like this, I guarantee that you're in shape. If I see somebody down there, uh, is that a shapeless expression? <laughs> you have to go into shape. And what is the shape? It's a person. Personal identity is your shape. Is it possible, is it natural to not have a shape? Somebody tell me, is it natural to not have a shape? Is it possible to not have a shape? OK, let me make it a bit easier. Yes. Is it possible to not have a shape with a shape? <laughs> so there is a kind of shape, because it is a shape, but you are not living in that shape. You are not, you know, that is not your reference. Is it possible that the reference for most people is their person, isn't it? When you, when somebody talks to you, hey, where are you from? You know, you you're from some place. You know, you know, you, you still live at home with your parents. You have your parents. Yeah, that's a shape. You know, I mean, uh, you know, what language do you speak? Uh, so that's a shape. You know, so okay, are these shapes your eternal nature? So you can have those shapes, but before you, what was first, the shape or before the shape? Is it before the shape? Because from shape you can return to shapeless. From shapeless you can go into shape. Is it possible to be primarily shapeless? Meaning what? That you are just consciousness in the shape of this body. The body is there. The consciousness is functioning in there, but the consciousness is responding from a from a shapeless place. Is that a strong situation or a weak situation? Strong. Yeah. Is it only strong sometimes or is it strong all the time? <laughs> now, why you don't listen to me then? If you if you say it's true, why you don't follow then? 
because he says to me, right? He says just now, I, I sat in the mandir nine hours. I sit in the mandir contemplating, and the mind beat him up. For nine hours, he was beating you up. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. It's it's coming in waves. Like as as soon as I recognize my true position, like everything, the contemplation is just beautiful, and it's like a confirming. Yeah. But as soon I'm imagining to be somebody, mm. there's almost nothing that can be... Really so when you're imagining you're somebody, there's nothing you can do about it. You're locked. It's not seen that, that it's just uh, an appearance. Or like it's you hear what he says? So when, he, when you imagine that you're somebody, in that moment, uh, you're not, you, you, you cannot remember that you're nobody. In that moment, you are somebody. So you just have to go cold turkey until the state finishes, and you go, "Wow, whew, that was you know." Is that truth? Is it truth that when you are in the shape of somebody, that's listen. All you guys used to be only somebody. All you knew about yourself was somebody. That's. Then after being with me for a while, listening to satsangs and whatever, are you only a shape of somebody? So is that an advancement or not? Yeah. So therefore, when you are not somebody, when you are not somebody, is a better thing or not? Your life is happier, isn't it? No. So you know you're going the right direction. Okay. Okay. Is there more space you can keep going in that direction? Come on, talk to me. You know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What What is as far as you can go in that direction? First, you were just a shape of your. You're a woman. You're, you know, 28 years old. You studied blah 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 blah, and then you came to to satsang, and it's advising you. But you are aware. You are aware of this, uh, all of these things, and it's so you, actually, it didn't just make sense. Hmm? It made reality for you. You could see, but but all this I can observe, and when it goes, I'm still here to observe it goes. That was a fundamental um, recognition, isn't it? Thereafter, you are coming out of the personhood trap, isn't it? Then you came into the place where you can be more, what I say, conscious presence, meaning that you are aware when your person, when the mind comes and starts to say, "Yeah, well, you never did it, and you're not good enough," and blah, 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 and sometimes he gets you. So sometimes you kind of feel, "Oh no, 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 no." And then you remember, wait a second, I can observe all of this. And in the instant you remember you can observe all of this, the headache is gone, isn't it? The, the attack is over, isn't it? And then he comes back again and goes, Yeah, you know, I'm silly. And oh, no, no, no. You're going to sit in a man there for nine hours. <laughs> and he's not banned from the man there, basically. He comes to the man there too. Especially, he knows who to come with. Okay, for some people he cannot come with. Then you come and you see you are trying to meditate, you are trying to focus. But you, who is the one trying to focus, is still got a lot of person in you. So of course, mine is there, because he can relate to your person. If you go and you are only the consciousness, you know, can your mind trouble you in such a? Isn't there something significant in this? If you were told just to come to the fullness of that understanding completely, completely, earn your time here completely, and you are liberated, and it's not my opinion, my experience, it will be your experience, right? How much more help you need than this one? Is it a work you can do by yourself? Yes. How to do that, girl? Huh? I was in this fully, I would say here, happy. And then yesterday, so I got triggered. Something happened, and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and it just got bigger and bigger. And then okay. you say, "You who were watching this, were you watching as consciousness or as person?" I got to ask you this, you know, because I'm just 
I am 100% here with you. How much percent you're here with me? Because you have heard me speak about it. You say, yes, OK, you were, you were fine, and then somehow something triggers. The trigger means somehow identity comes up. Identity comes up. Identity come up. Identity is a condition. No? Mm-hmm. It's like supposing you have uh, you suffer from, um, you know, uh, what do you call this? Mm. Dementia. Mm-hmm. Dementia. Is it called dementia when you can't remember? Like dementia. what I'm happening right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Suppose something happened like that. And then you say you you cannot remember. I was having one conversation with my mother, and she was in the late stage of her life, and she was not remembering things, and she was feeling very low. I said, "Mom, what's the matter with you?" I was talking to her. She's in Jamaica. She says, "I I I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything." Uh, so I said, uh, "Is that why you're sad?" She says, "Yes." I said, but you are aware you cannot remember, isn't it? And she goes, ah, yeah, I'm aware I cannot remember. That meant something. That had a power for her. She was not brought up with this introspection and stuff like that. But in that moment, she said, but I'm aware that I'm not remembering. I'm still here. My, my brain is not working, but I'm here. That meant something, isn't it? You see? So, where do you stand? Do you really do you doubt? Uh, do you doubt me in this thing? Have you tried it and see that it works, or do you think it's just a kind of trick? It works. Huh? It works. How much it work? How much percent it work? Huh? Hundred percent. How much percent it work? Hundred percent until it doesn't. <laughs> he said it works one hundred percent until it doesn't. <laughs> I don't even understand. What, I don't even understand what's happening. No, no, no. I we understand. It's very simple. You know, your brain is happening. Your mind is happening. Your mind is coming up with things that has come up in the past, and these things they belong to your old self. You've not finished with your old self yet. We're still going to shopping in the same supermarket of the old self. So of course, sometimes some things come and it will come up like that, no? And then you forget. It's like you know, whoa, whoa. At the moment, it feels real. It's not even that I forget fully. It's that I'm really annoyed, and I'm sick of this old self. Like if I'm really honest. Stop there. Okay, you are annoyed and you're sick of this old self. Can I ask you guys? The one who is speaking now, is this one a reliable voice? No. No. (laughs) Is there any more space left in you apart from this voice? I know you. I know you have gone way past this already many times. I am asking you again now. Is there more space? Is this all? Have you run out of space now? When I speak with you like this, it's like she okay. That's as far as she's come. She says, "There's no more. I cannot go anymore. I cannot give one more inch emoji." Or is it that you know, you have gone past this much, much more? Even the one who is saying, "You know, I am sick of my mind. I'm tired. Guruji, please today chop him. Please kill him and stuff." Right? Okay. Yes, that's what I want. Who want? <laughs> Stora, I want to hear. I want to hear who wants. Okay. We got time. Yeah, it's the same one. Uh-huh. It's the same one. It's the one that's like, um, oh, sorry. It's all the same one, playing different with different hats. Okay, be awareness now, and 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 and, and because that's where you're speaking from right now. Don't identify emotionally with any state. Just before she's saying, "Look, you know," uh, uh, she's laughing now. Uh, uh, I just want to be finished with this one, okay? No, I said, 
must I treat you according to this voice? You know? You know? Must I treat you? And is this voice reliable? No, no. So why are we being so respectful to this voice also? Isn't this voice also another shape that you take up? You see? But this one feels even more intimate now. It feels like, you know, this is but you know, like this this is me. But is it yet? Is it all there is of you? Is this the best there is of you? Is this the most there is of you? I'm just asking. Okay. Like this. So what is left then? What is seeing all of this play? Where now you're crying, crying, crying. That's when she's laughing and eating chocolates in the kitchen and telling a joke about kangaroos and stuff. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, which one should we? Will the, will the right one step forward, please? Is is this not all the, the, the play of consciousness in the waking state? The consciousness take up all these shapes and we talk about this on the basis of the the role we play in consciousness as a person. Something like this. What I am asking you. I don't want to have a relationship with the play of yourself. Mm-hmm. I want you to speak from the consciousness which overlooks all of this. Is anything happening to the consciousness? Mm-hmm. The now, is it unreasonable for me to say this is how I wish to relate to you? No, no. Is it chopping off most of you and just saying, I just want that ten percent <laughs> of you? Now please tell me. No, no. You know? Is this the the smaller part of you, that little ten percent, or is it like this is this is it, this is the place or not? And is it possible that you can be this? And you can still talk and say yesterday when when I was seventeen we went so on so but now what will be different is that that story will be very superficial. It won't be so deep. You will not spend hours talking about your person. Something inside, a higher intelligence, will just kind of know when to cut off. It's like, yeah, you know what? I don't really want to talk about it actually, because the more you talk about it, the more you are giving life to it, and something just an intelligence inside you, a wisdom, knows. Nah. You make a choice like this, no? and then you have more room to just be in the place where you're naturally peaceful. What happens is your mind is troubled when you are peaceful. He doesn't have much room to play, and he's going boring, boring. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's your name? You're all right. All right. And then you try to be interesting and murder everybody. Can you bear your own silence? Can you bear your own emptiness? You see. Do you have to hold your breath to be empty? It's your natural state. I'm only pointing what's natural. I want to see if there's anyone or any yogi, anybody who is aware of themselves, who is like this. <laughs> How are you? No, I'm sorry, I'm being aware right now. <laughs> is is it like this? Usually when you see people like this. It's because they're in their person and they're in their mind. You're not in your heart. In your heart, you're very open. You're fearless. You're easy in any situation, even situations which are totally unpredictable. You're quite comfortable with yourself because you, you, your life needs to be unpredictable. Don't try to make it unpredictable, but when you're in your heart, it's you know things are fresh. There are surprises, you know. Yeah. When you're in your mind, your mind is trying to do what it did yesterday, what it did this morning. But I want to know if the things I'm sharing with you now, if they are true. And there's a force that seems to be opposing that naturalness, to pull you off into some in some person frustrations and to, you know, like this. We all know it, no? I say, this life opportunity 
is to transcend the influence of that psychological voice. Do you agree or not? Yes. Yeah, because it doesn't make you happy. It does not make you happy. You are happy when you are just, when you are empty and fresh and present, and don't need to do something. But if something needs to be done, it gets done. What is more simple than this? We have something which sometimes can, an aspect of Western conditioning, makes us very very fickle. Always jumping about, always changing, always restless. It's a part of the Western ego mind like that. You are not this Western ego mind. You are still the perfect consciousness. But you must be aware of that. That's all. And when you are truly aware, that's why sometimes I give you little things that I can say, suppose you only had three more days left to live. Can you clean up in three days? No? No. Yeah. Clean up what? She said, clean up what? The stuff we are here talking about. <laughs> Can you be free of it? And what would free of it mean? That it doesn't come? Yeah, it can come. You cannot stop uh, something from tempting you, but you can overcome by not cooperating with it. There is something that is going to come, and it is going to try to bring you into a state of duality and like this. But you are wiser now. Every one of you are wiser than when you first encountered this pointing. Or tell me something, depress me then. Tell me, you know, you have nothing has happened, nothing changed. I'm still the same miserable, you know, locked up ego. Or is it that your victory is only mental? Or intellectual? Is it experiential? Could you can ask something? Yeah. I don't always know when um, emotions come. Yeah. If I can just leave them, or it means I need to interpret. If I need to take a reading from this, like, OK, I feel like this, so I need to look into this, or... Yeah. If yeah, the if emotions I... come, and they start to act upon your sense of identity, you start to feel like, oh, you know, oh, no, I wish I did that. And you can see that it is, you know, you've had a, you've had a drink of the alcohol mind, you know? Huh? And you're under the influence, and you talk. Are you not able to sort of see that? Is it too late? Yeah. You know? And what would be a success in that? You know? It's not that you have to be watching yourself like, you know, suspiciously. No, it's gradually what's happening is that inside your being there's going to be longer states of continual um, serenity and peace. It's a natural state. Your natural state is not going around trying to shoot down your mind. It's not like, who was that? It's not suspicious. It's natural. It's empty. It's just beautiful. That even if you're not thinking, you're not speaking, other beings, so let's say like this, they feel very good in your presence. Your presence exudes a peacefulness, a tranquility. It inspires others, even without your knowing. Actually, you know, it becomes activated. When there is a need to look, you know. Recently, we were in uh, one place. Even yesterday, there is a lift now. I'm watching these lifts. It's called escalators, the one with the steps. I see them. You know, I see one coming down with people moving quite fast, another one going very slow. No? So what's happening? And what it works is that if there's nobody, it doesn't waste its energy going up and down. When someone, as soon as somebody steps on it, it moves up and it starts to move like this. No? Your consciousness is as economical like that. He is a rest, he rests, you know, he's happy, happy resting. When mind comes with some of his nonsense and stuff like that, it takes a particular look. It can ignore that. A lot of things you can just ignore, actually. The mind is trying to, you know, it's trying to get your attention. I've seen one time somebody show me a picture of one dog 
you probably see it, a dog sitting like this, and a goat is trying to molest this dog. <laughs> and the goat is like, <laughs> licking his face and pushing, <laughs> and the dog is just calm like this. <laughs> and the, dog, the goat is doing all kinds of stuff, and the dog is just very calm. Sometimes your mind is like this goat. <laughs> yes, what? And then he's already got your attention, basically. <laughs> okay, okay, you're already in. Sometimes you can look like this, just be ignore it. Another time, if it's too strong, you cannot be ignored, and you can bring it into your inquiry. We're just to. So why is this feeling so strong? Well, because I'm growing in identity. Um, it's warming me up to be to get into a fight. Then you remember who are you being warmed? You think, oh, it's not. Just drop it. That your inquiry helps you to just break free from the from locking in. You can use any concept, but don't get locked into them. And one of my quintessential pointings: don't take shape. You understand, no? What I mean again, I tell you, meaning that your mind somehow plays sometimes, and is trying to get you into a context. When I say everyone has a kind of a self-reference. Is your self-reference personal, or is your self-reference awareness or consciousness? That makes a big difference. Is when you relate to yourself, is it personal? Is it back in history? And yeah, oh my God, I forgot to do it. And do you have debates with yourself based upon personhood? Is your reference for yourself personal, or is it impersonal? If it is impersonal. You're escaping every so-called trap very, very quickly. You're out of it. Reflect on what I just talked about, no? and you'll find you'll have the happiest day today. Yeah. Yeah. You often say life takes care of life. Yes. So, for quite some time, mostly, um, I've experience that impulses come and it's not through the mind it's not a thought oh I must do this there's not that it's just an impulse and it happens a book a fly to make come to want to come here whatever it happens like that so what triggered this whole thing because in my long time I'm very good at pushing and making things happen and maybe a few years ago I thought I'm gonna stop that I just want to allow and just respond to these impulses and not be such a control freak. So what triggered all of this was that someone came to me and said, ah, oh, you shouldn't have done that. And, and suddenly there was this, ah, oh, but hang on, life takes care of life. That was the impulse. That was just the truth. And it's like, the trouble comes when a decision needs to be made and there's not a clear impulse yet and so there's a waiting that happens for this clear the clarity of the decision but then this mind came and went well what if that's not true in the outer world what if life doesn't take care of life so it's like if i do nothing if the person does nothing, mm -hmm. and well, you know what? When the person doesn't do anything, when the person does nothing, the person remains as the one who does nothing. <laughs> um, when I say life takes care of life, actually, I would not go and say say, say this on the street. So easy. I say it because you can understand that. That when you are in a state of grace, because coming out of ego rule is a state of grace, then I say that the mind, psychological mind, seems to be trying to attract you to go back into, into being a controller. Okay, but you remember, Lord, life takes care of life, and you see that. What does that statement help you to do? To not act out of anxiety not to be stressed, and to trust a little bit, and to observe if it works. And you will see that it works. Almost everyone in life is acting in a rush and prematurely, because they don't have the trust 
that life takes care of life. They feel that if they don't act now, they're going to miss their chance and everything is going to be a big mess. That's how mind kind of operates also. No? So when you are in a conscious state and you feel, they say, well, Guruji says, you know, life takes care of life. And, you know, the mind is saying, yeah, you better act now because if you, you miss your chance, you miss your chance. Maybe it's not right. Maybe life takes care of life mostly, but not always. And all this, you know, and you know, yeah, maybe uh, you're already in. You're already doing a deal, basically. I just say, you know, as I am not pointing anyone to become rigid and stiff. Actually, as you come to recognize the truest teaching, the truest pointing, that you are the awareness itself, something just relaxes, just excels. No? Because from the place of pure awareness, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. There is no fixed wrong and right in that kind of like way. But it takes a maturity to understand that. Not everybody will understand that immediately. But as your, your wisdom is confirming these things, he says, but last time I kind of trusted, and it just I watched that something, which my, my mind could never have worked it out, but in that moment, as things are flowing, I saw that something else moved, and I felt I can't do this. I've just broke my leg, I can't do this, and something just moved in and took your place and went and filled it. So, wow, how could anybody have seen that? It's not human beings that make life flow. Human beings need to themselves learn and to let go into the flow of existence. If you try to control, you're not flowing, you're just controlling. And uh, but as I say, we grow with experience, you become much more relaxed, more trusting, more open, less intimidated by the psychological play of the mind. No? And you see it. People become more fresh, the more relaxed. What do you like when you're letting go? You look younger. Much more light, much more easy, not so stressed, you know. Is my talk theoretical or not? No, no. Because I love to see that you when I see you apply, I see the evidence of it. When I say you must become the evidence that truth exists. What it means? It's not on paper. No exam, but as you are living, you become the evidence to your own self also. My life is so much more happy, but so much more peaceful. I'm not stressed by all the things my mind imagines I should be doing. You know, so these things. What is today? What day is today? Wednesday. Okay, I'll call a satsang tomorrow. We have a sit down and we can take a look, yeah? Yeah. Hmm? We'll let you know about what time, yeah? And now I must get back to what I was going to do now. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very nice, very nice. So we empty or full? Empty. Ah, we really did good. <laughs> empty and full. <laughs> Tom said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Full of love. This you can be full of because when when you're full of love, you never feel bloated. <laughs> Unlike gluten. Unlike <laughs> gluten. When you're full of love, you're never bloated. When you're full of mind. Yeah, very, very different story. Okay. Sir, we are okay? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have to go and do something now. Love you so, love you so. Wonderful, wonderful. Traffic coming up. See you in a bit, guys. Love you. Thank you. Ah, good, good.